Happy Monday, folks. It's Hockey Playoff Edition. We're back. I'm Miguel Mike Medina. This is my partner, Jim. Jim, unforgettable weekend, especially Sunday night. I, what, what, just, go, just go, man. You got, you, go. Got, you got no words. I mean, the craziest day probably in the National Hockey League's history because the President's Trophy winners get eliminated. The defending Stanley Cup champions are gone. We haven't seen a day like that in probably ever. And the fact that it was the national spotlight on Sunday night makes it even better. No Tampa, no Boston, no Colorado. We will have a new Eastern Conference champion and a new team will be wearing the belt. If you're the Edmonton Oilers and Toronto Maple Leafs, I look at those two, you got to have your confidence on the other all-time high right now, especially Edmonton. And that's the first one I'm going to go to, Edmonton. As you can see, I'm wearing the jersey. Um, they beat the Kings. The Kings officially ate the Oilers. Back-to-back -back season, they get eliminated by the Oilers. And it was just a terrific game um, by the Oilers. Now they're going to play... Play, um, play the Vegas Golden Knights, which that will be a fantastic matchup. I can't wait to see that one. Yeah, that's going to be a great, great matchup. I mean, good for Edmonton to get it done. They locked it down defensively. Their depth scoring showed up. Yeah, look, we know Leon Dreisaitl, Connor McDavid, even Evan Bouchard, you know, that power play is deadly. Uh, again, the power play struck again in game six. But it was Kyler Yamamoto late in the third period, steps up, you know, Stuart Skinner makes a big save, and the Oilers figure out a way after three days, no game. They get it done. They go play Vegas. That's going to be a fun series because Vegas got weapons too, and let's see if Edmonton can get there. They're hungry. They want to get back. They tasted the Western Conference final last year. Let's see if they can get back. Yes, and in order to make it far, they got to beat the best teams. So they got to pull themselves again against Vegas. Um, I hope this series goes to distance. I have Edmonton in seven games, so let's see what happens. But uh, Toronto Maple Leafs, they made me so happy. Finally, they're partying like it's 2004 all over again. John Tavares, this is his fifth season with the club. The captain, he's part of the core four. With Nylander, Marner, Matthews, he wins it for Toronto to send them to the second round. And finally, finally, like The Rock says, the Maple Leafs are going to the second round. They have that huge weight lifted off their shoulders. I am so happy for Toronto, so happy. I'm so happy for Toronto too. Look, it was a long time coming. You could see the relief on these guys after they got it done. Matthews, Marner, Nylander, Riley, Tavares, especially Tavares, fourth year's captain. He knows what it's about. Uh, he was a big fan of the Leafs growing up. That's why he signed there. But give props. Ilya Samsonov outdueled Andre Vasilevsky in game six because if it wasn't for Samsonov, we might have a game seven in that series. You know, the Maple Leafs got breaks. They got three overtime wins on the road. Not easy to do, but that's the kind of stuff that propels you to make deep playoff runs. I feel like they're going to play more loose hockey now because they have the weight of the world off of them. I know they have a tough opponent in the next round, but I feel like this could be what propels the Maple Leafs potentially to end that curse of 67 because they haven't won since then. I feel like now they can make that run. Yes, and they will be playing the Panthers now. And if you're the Panthers, you got to feel all the confidence in the world especially after the game last night. I saw that they went up 2-0. Then when I saw they went down 3-2, I went to bed. I couldn't keep up anymore because I would have bet early. So I was like, you know what? This is Boston being Boston all over again. These Boston teams always have miracles. Always things go their way since 2001. So I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I wake up early in the morning and I see that the Panthers on four to three in overtime. I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So the president's trophy winners, misery continues. The last team 
that won the President's Trophy, won the Stanley Cup with the 2013 Chicago Blackhawks. We discussed that before. Boston Bruins, the city of Boston is crying right now. Sorry, not sorry. But <laughs> hey, that's hockey for you. Stanley Cup playoffs, rules over NBA playoffs. I don't care who doesn't like the common, but it's the truth. Absolutely, and to, and to borrow a phrase, it probably Jordan wasn't the first one to say it. But in 96, 97, when the Bulls were going for it, even Marchant said it. All these records, all this stuff doesn't mean a thing if you don't got the ring. The Bruins, they don't got the ring. Historic season, gone. And Sergei Bobrovsky took out the Tampa Bay Lightning 2019. He just took out the Boston Bruins again. Look, give credit to the Florida Panthers. Down 3-1 in this series. Series on the line, season on the line. Bobrovsky makes the save. Kachuk gets the overtime winner. But the lapses by the Boston Bruins defense allowed the Panthers to stick around in this series. Again, time and time again, game six, now in game seven, Brandon Montour, what a play. Matthew Kachuk keeps the puck in. Carter Verhage, another overtime winner. Series, that's back-to-back years for him. So look, this Panthers team is really good. They're hungry. They want it. Paul Maurice, a great head coach. But again, it proves... The Stanley Cup playoffs are a different beast when it comes to the regular season. Look, Boston had guys step up. Tyler Bertuzzi played great. But Florida wanted it more. Since Marchant was stopped, no. The Panthers wanted it. Toronto has to be careful just because this Panthers team is hungry. I think Toronto's going to play well. I think Toronto's going to win this series. But the Panthers are playing well. And the fact that the game is Tuesday instead of Wednesday or Thursday, advantage Panthers in game one. That's a series that we should pay attention to because both teams have so much confidence going into this round. So um, hopefully it goes into distance with this series. Panthers are hungry. The Maple Leafs, they will play loose, but they should not keep, they should keep their foot on the gas against the Panthers team. And how about Seattle cranking? How about Seattle? Sleep hey, give it up Seattle. for Seattle. Yo, give it up for Seattle, man. I mean, Kraken come from the seas, take out the champs in year two. Unreal. Unreal. When Colorado won game six, I figured, you know what, they're the champs. They might have a shot in game seven, but it, it was it was a dicey situation that it, it like if you're a hockey fan, it would be tough to bet who you're gonna go with in Game Seven. But Seattle, man, and once again, I mean Seattle is the first um, playoff team in NHL history to score the first goal in all of the games. So congratulations to Seattle. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing them perform in the next round against the Dallas Stars, which should be a fascinating matchup, but we still got to find out the status on Joe Pavelski. Um, if he can go, then um, it's an advantage for Seattle, but we'll see what happens there. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about it. I mean, Dallas has, has you know, Jake Gottinger. He basically stole that series. And, I mean, he, he was phenomenal. If he's going to continue to be like that, Dallas can, can win this series. I mean, it's a different series now for Seattle because – they were able to roll four lines, play hard against Colorado. Colorado was missing some key players. Uh, their depth scoring wasn't there. I mean, Seattle had 15 different score, goal scorers in, in the series. You know, obviously, Miko Rantanen and Nathan McKinnon did what they could. But Philip Grubauer was a difference maker in this series. He outperformed uh, Alexander Georgiev when it mattered. It's not like Georgiev had a bad series, but he didn't have that breakout game. You know, Grubauer had that game, and it's always... You know, he wanted to stick it to his old team, and he did. And Seattle's off to the next round. But they're going to be in a physical war, but that's how they play. Dallas likes to play physical too, but, you know, Seattle can grind you four lines deep. Um, I would, you know, Seattle's such a good road team. That's why it's such a toss-up in these game sevens. And Colorado and Seattle were so good, so it kind of made sense that the road team won this thing. But I would not be shocked if Seattle goes into Dallas and wins. But, you know, it, it's going to come down to goaltending for me, but it's going to be a nut. I think all these series are going to be fun to watch. And to end it with this, it's another Game 7. 
Devils, Rangers, or I should say Rangers Devils because the Devils will be playing at home. Um, Rangers finally woke up, scored five goals on Saturday night to push it to game seven. 1992 game seven, 1994 game seven, and now um, 2012 should have been a game seven as well, but now we're having one in 2023 and it's pretty nerve wracking because this is it. But that's why you love the Rangers and Devils go out in the postseason because it's never a sweep. It's never five games. It's either six or seven games where these two go at it. And it's been going on since the early 90s. Different players now. Um, but I hope this, this is not a lopsided game. Hopefully it's a good game. What are your expectations of this game? I think it's going to be a low-scoring affair. I think the goalies and the defense, I don't think guys are going to want to make a mistake. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a physical game, but I don't think guys are going to try to go out there and try to be like, try to play hero hockey. Everybody's going to get the puck deep, cycle. You're taking 30, 45-second shifts. You're off. No mistake. You make a mistake, you probably won't see the rest of the game. Uh, that's what it's going to be like. I mean, the Rangers have the experience. They have guys that have been in this position before. New Jersey really doesn't outside of a couple of guys. But I think, you know, I think it's going to be a fun game. I, I don't really think we're going to see a high scoring game. But again, limit your turnovers, limit power play opportunities. And, and whoever is the better team is going to come out of here and go to Carolina. Since you're a Devils fan, my question to you is, what do you think? Who do you think will be the X Factor or should be the X Factor in Game 7? Look, to me, I think, you know, we've seen what Akira Schmid's done through the time he's been in here. Yeah, he didn't have a great Game 6, but the entire team didn't. The Devils need Nico Kishir, Jesper Bratt, or Timo Meyer to score a goal. I know I gave you three names. You asked for one X Factor. But those guys have yet to record a, a single goal in, the, in this postseason. These guys need to score. You brought Meyer in for a reason. It's not like they're not getting looks. Shesterkin's been there, but Brad passes the puck up way too much. Nico Huescher got robbed the other night, but the, these guys are looking to be too cute when you got to throw the puck on net. Panthers, Bruins showed it. Bruins fans were going out of their minds because their team wasn't throwing a puck on net. Shoot the puck, and the puck will go in. Everybody else is playing well. We know what Jack can do. I expect Nico Huescher and, or, and any of those guys I think they're going to have a big game seven. It's good that you mentioned Timo Meyer because that's the first person that came into my mind. So um, let's see. It shall be a, a fun night. But like I said, when you have Rangers and Devils, you just love that those series goes to distance. Yeah, you do. I mean, I think the only time in my memory that the, the series only went five was, I believe, 97 and 2008. I believe that was it. Devils that year, I think, won the first game in each of those series and then just went away for some reason. But other than that, they've gone the distance. Uh, this will be the first time the Devils have home ice for game seven against the Rangers. So usually it's the other way around. The Devils have to go to Madison Square Garden. But uh, this time it's in New Jersey, so it should be a fun game. I, I expect the crowd to be hot uh, like it's been. But, you know, first goal is going to matter in this one because it's going to dictate how the teams are going to play. I think now that we're talking about it, I think, or I should say I might, before even the game is played, I'll relive some of these classic Rangers Devils um, games since God bless YouTube for that. Yeah. And, you know, see a, just a little snippet of that um, because obviously I can't watch the whole thing since the game is tonight. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, but just like relive um, some of those and and, and even probably catch on to things that I probably didn't catch on before. So I'll probably do that now that we're talking about it. Yeah, I know there's been like, I believe in like that 92 Patrick division playoff, like those, there was like some fights in game six. It was crazy. Um, but Devils Rangers never disappoints game seven. You gotta love it. Only game in town tonight before the second round gets underway on Tuesday. Everybody's gonna be watching. So it's going to be a fun game. I will be a nervous wreck like I always am during these games. But, you know, hope for the Devils to win. But whoever the better team is, like I said, is going to go to Carolina.